Thank you. So do, um, do we know if we have anybody that has signed up to attend or comment um, remotely? I don't know. Then uh, let's call this meeting to order and our uh, board meeting for the December 2023. And if we could have a roll call, I'm going to start, and then we could just go around the table. Uh, Deb Duffy here. Katie Ryan here. Linda Mokler here. Chris Armstrong here. Mel Adams here. Okay. So we are all here, except for Dorian. Dorian is uh, at a family um, event. Um, and we miss her, but she's um, pleased that she was able to do that. All right, uh, since we have no one speaking, let's go to um, the, can I have a motion for approval of the uh, board minutes, the consent agenda? Minutes from the live meeting. Motion. Bell Adams, I move the approve the minutes from last meeting. Katie Ryan second. <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Then let's get to the very pleasurable event. We're so happy that we have a guest presenter tonight. Um Eunice McKinley. McKinley? McKinley. McKinley. Apologies. Um, okay. And uh, we're, we're so pleased that you could come tonight, and we're looking forward very much to your presentation, and I'm going to stop talking so you can get to the good stuff. Awesome. Okay. So I was asked to come present about the work I'm doing, um, allow you all to know a little bit more about me. Uh, coming up on a year here in um, end of March, I believe, so time is flying very, very fast. So. It's, it's a bit crazy. So I'm hoping to just give you all a bit background information of kind of my journey that's led me to here, um, how I got into this work, as well as to talk about some of the stuff that I've been working on and I've been up to as well. So um, if you have any questions, thoughts, I don't know if you'd have them or where you'd have them, um, feel free to just um, interrupt. So thanks for having me. Let's see if this works. Okay, you're gonna have to be my personal clicker. <laughs> you get the right arrow, just hit the right arrow on the corner. Wait for me to make it. Oh, it's big for you. <laughs> okay, so like I said, I joined the Hills, Hills, city of Hillsborough in March of 2023 as a diversity, equity, and inclusion manager. It's crazy to think that I'm coming up on a year. Um, it's gone by very, very fast. And I think I'm at that place in this role where people are finally knowing that I'm here. So the last few months have definitely picked up significantly, which everybody told me about. But I was like, nah, they, they're not going to reach out to the diversity equity inclusion manager, but I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, it's working now. Um, some fast facts about me. So I was born and raised in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm actually first generation uh, Nigerian American. My parents moved to the U.S. in the late 80s, um, actually to seek asylum because there was a lot of per religi religious persecution happening um, in Nigeria at the time. So um, me, and at that time, my three older brothers and my mom moved here and my dad joined us later. Um, I have four brothers and one sister, so we're a massive family and we're spread throughout. But um, a lot of, I share that to say so much of my, of who I am is really greatly tied to like my cultural heritage, um, as well as, you know, spent most of my life in Phoenix and then moved to Portland actually for college on a track scholarship. Um, I was a runner. Um, and I was a hundred meter hurdler. So I was a hurdler and I enjoyed that and did that for several years. And actually we won a national championship, which is something I'm really proud of. If you're a college athlete or know about that, it's a lot of work, but it was fun. Um, I'm also a certified gal Clifton strengths coach. Um, that's something else that I enjoyed doing along with um, my DEI work is just the ability to come and help support teams and help them um, take this assessment, but also learn about their strengths and talents and how that works within a team setting. And so that's something I'm really passionate about. And I had the opportunity to get certified in when I was working at Portland State um, several years ago. And I've been in the DEI space now for 11 plus years, which is really crazy to me. 
Um, I think when you graduate from college, like many, many moons ago, you're like, to say you're an expert in something is just really, really weird, but to count the years and see all the things one has done um, is something I'm really proud of. And I'm glad that I've stayed the course and I'm still passionate about this work um, years later. Um, I got my secondary, uh, my undergraduate degree in secondary education, thought I actually wanted to be a teacher. Um, I'm really passionate about literature. I love writing. I love the English language and language. Um, my student taught and realized right away that that was not the path I wanted to take. <laughs> um, primarily because, I mean, I was student teaching at Benson High School, actually, and I was in like a really small classroom with about close to 40 students and just realized really firsthand just kind of the needs of the students. I just wasn't able to actually support them in that way. And as much as I love, you know, talking about the ins and outs of To Kill a Mockingbird or other, you know, pieces of literature, it didn't really matter when a student was coming in and they just didn't care, like have the ability to pay attention or be in the classroom. And so that was the first time I really started asking myself is like, what does it look like to be on a different side of this work? Um, I'm sitting here having to like pass certain kids because their parents are complaining and that's what I'm being told to do by a student teacher. But like, what about the kid that's showing up and is at home with their three or four siblings and is struggling every day to just even get to class? And I'm receiving kind of that frustration that they are even navigating. And so that was the first time I really kind of thought about like, what does work look like outside of being in this space? I want to do something greater than just like teaching educational material. So when I graduated, I knew I didn't want to come back to Phoenix, um, but I didn't know where else I was going to go. <laughs> so I ran into the academic advisor's office and was like, what can I do to stay in Portland? And that's actually where I ended up um, getting a job where I was working as a multicultural peer mentoring coordinator um, at my alma mater, which is Concordia University, Portland, and was helping them essentially start a mentoring program where first generation um, college students of color um, were mentoring uh, freshman students of color. And the hope was just to help retain students better that are from historically marginalized backgrounds. So did that for two years, helped build that program. And something I wanna mention that I think is really important is around 2012, um, this is like the first time, a lot of people, and I was telling Simone about this earlier, um, this is actually when you started hearing a lot of stuff, really there was an uprising in college campuses and universities where um, students from historically marginalized groups were really beginning to step forward and demand that their institutions would start actually providing services that were supporting them. Um, and you're hearing a lot of really like crazy stories of some of like the racism that was happening in those spaces. So up until that point, there was actually not a lot of institutions um, that actually had direct services that were serving marginalized communities. Um, you were seeing a lot of sit-ins. So me coming in 2012, my alma mater did not have a multicultural service office. Um, we were starting to see that kind of happen at our institution. And the reason why I share that too is that this idea of like diversity, equity, inclusion work was not really a terminology being used at the time. You were hearing terms more like multicultural being used. Um, and so it's actually progressed in a short amount of time, only 2012, where you've been seeing that word transcend. Um, and it really started with a lot of what was happening in healthcare and a lot of what was happening at institutions um, as well, too. So me going into multicultural work at that time, I had no idea what that was going to look like or what that was going to be. I was just like, I need a job and this is going to be the job I'm going to do. Um, and it was the first time for me where I really started navigating even what it meant to show up in a space. Um, and people not see like my Nigerian American identity and just see a black woman and what that meant and what that looked like. So did that work, started that program as well as helped them start their multicultural services op office. And then I decided I wanted to go back to school and get my master's degree in community <laughs> psychology. And the idea behind that is I really wanted to understand systems and how they worked. And that program just seemed like a really good program. Um, community psychology is not a field that's very common. It's growing more wind in um, the United States, but you're going to see it more in European countries as well, where that's more of a field that you're talking about more like, I guess, more socialist form of governments. Mm -hmm. And the idea behind that is really, I didn't want to be in a place where I was more of like on an activist level where people aren't really listening to like my thoughts and ideas and how I'm supporting the community. But I also didn't want to be in a position where I was at the top, where I had no idea what was going on with the communities in which decisions were being made. And so this field just seemed like a really good baseline for me to find a place where I'm able to, you know, sit somewhere in the middle and have a connection to both of those entities and hopefully help support and invoke change. And 
one of the things I really love about community psychologists is idea um, of participatory action research. And the idea behind that is oftentimes we come into spaces as experts and we say, this is what the community needs and this is what they need to do. Um, community psychology says, no, we're actually, we're relying on the community members and folks that we're interacting. They're the experts <laughs> and they're actually telling us what they need. Can, and, sorry, can you repeat what that, what that is? I'm gonna like... um, participatory action research. Yeah. And so like, you're actually the expert you're teaching us and telling us what you do. And then we're actually, our job is to make sure you have the resources you need so we can empower, motivate and help. And then we can eventually leave and you carry on that work for your communities. And so um, that's something I really actually drew me to the city of Hillsborough was just that mentality of wanting more to do more work like that and really having the community in mind. So got my master's in 2016 and then I was ready to move off that college campus because I'd been there since I was 18 and I think I was 22 at the time. <laughs> so ended up applying for jobs and got a role at Portland State University in their school of business. And I was doing the same thing there where I was building a program um, for all students from historically underrepresented backgrounds in the school of business. Um, that program is still there, it's called Atmos. Um, so if you know anybody who's in the business program, they're probably a part of that or they had been a part of that. And so I got to do that for a couple of years and then decided that I wanted to do something different. And mostly because I felt like I was an institution. Again, my role is very, very new in this space. So I'm coming in at like a, as like a 23 year old or 24 year old at that time. And I'm an expert in this field and I haven't worked like any number of years at all. And so really wanting to just go in a space where I knew I could grow and have more mentorship and just try something different. So I decided to go to the nonprofit arena. And that was a trip because I started that the, literally the week that the state of Oregon shut down. So <laughs> I don't recommend that. It was <laughs> not great. <laughs> so did that work for an organization called Every Child Portland. And that was my first engagement, I guess, in some ways with government work in the sense of I was working really closely with the Department of Human Services. Um, and that organization, anybody in the state of Oregon that desires to become a foster care parent passes through this nonprofit organization. And so my job was facilitating a lot of that, helping with increasing numbers of uh, resource parents stepping forward, and then also supporting staff that was supporting children that were entering care. So did that for a couple of years and then decided it was time to leave after we entered back into the world and applied for this job. And that's how I ended up here in the city of Millville. So that's a bit about my journey and how I've gotten here as well, too. And obviously, between all of that, we all know that 2016 um, was kind of the first trace of when you started seeing an uptick, like with Travion Martin and all those things. And then 2020, you saw like a really the world started waking up to kind of all this stuff, injustice and things like that that had been happening. Um, and so I wasn't actually very sure if I wanted to come back into the DEI space. I started my own consulting thing on business on the side. Um, and I kind of like the idea of coming in and telling people what to do and then leaving because <laughs> I don't have to own the problems of, a, of an organization or entity. But um, like I said, I, what really drew me to the role here um, was just A, like the diversity that I saw higher up, um, being on a team that was really diverse, but even that, just seeing the work and the conversations that were being had. And I think my experience had really taught me, like, I'm going to ask the tough questions in an interview and see if they're going to answer them. And I like the answers that I got. So um, it just felt like a really, really good fit to for this to be part of my journey. Um, I've worked with several organizations. I do a lot of stuff on the, like, outside of that. I'm a creative by heart. Like, I love storytelling. I love being able to tell the stories of people. So I've done a lot of things, both behind cameras, as well as work with other organizations. Um, there's MLK with a do rag on. Um, so that's one of my favorite photos. <laughs> and just having conversations and inviting my friends and community to talk about like things that we don't always talk about. And so I just don't do this work. I try to live it as well too. And somehow within then find balance to have like normalcy and self-care and all those things. Um, some things about me, what keeps me inspired, music. Uh, my friends and family. I love nature and traveling. And I would say literature. Um, I'm a huge fan of Maya Angelou. Her work inspires me. And one of my favorite, favorite books that I read at least once a year um, is Strength to Love by Dr. Martin Luther King. Um, one thing about Dr. King that I will say is that I think he's the most quoted but misunderstood and underrated um, person in history. 
if you have any chance to read his writings or his sermons or anything of that nature, like such a deeply profound person that was speaking well beyond his lifetime. And that book to me captures the essence of who he is and everything he stood for. And anytime there's seasons in the world where it's like tumultuous and hard, I love to read that. And I also love to give it to leaders because I think it's a really good way to kind of see what kind of world he hoped for um, and what kind of world I think many of us hope for, regardless of where we stand in, in our own personal beliefs. Things I like to do, I like to bake, I'm a cake baker. Um, people don't know that, but <laughs> I'm really good at it. Um, I like walks and I love concerts and music. Um, got to see my like favorite artist, Lauren Hill, a couple months ago. And so these are things I do because this work is hard. So I try to find time to just make time for things that are fun. So what, is, what does a DI manager at the City of Hillsborough do? Let me tell you, I do a lot. <laughs> Um, so one of the first things that I do, um, I direct, plan, lead, and collaborate and promote like any DEI strategies are happening internally as well as activities. Um, I do policy review. One of the good things I love about me coming in at the time that I did is that oftentimes when you're coming into organizations as anybody doing DEI manager or work or diversity, equity, inclusion work is that you're oftentimes coming into a space where things are already set in stone and you're trying to then change mentalities and mindsets. Um, although that can be exciting and fun, it's not, doesn't have lo add longevity to being in a role like this. Um, and so one of the cool things that I'm excited that I'm actually was brought in in time for was actually the strategic planning process that the city has been doing. And so just being able to have conversations about like, where is equity gonna fit into this? What does that actually look like? Um, how are we going to empower employees and individuals and managers and directors to make sure that that's embedded in everything we do um, is an opportunity I get to have. And I think if I had come in at any other time when that was already in place, it would have been far harder to have those conversations after everybody's given like all their time and energy to a process. And then me coming in and being like, okay, I need you to give me more of your time and energy. So a lot of my work um, is really having to do with thinking through strategic thinking with departments and things of that nature. Um, I provide recommendations to city leadership and elected officials. Um, that's something that I think I'm probably going to be seeing more um, in the longer time that I'm here. But I've had the opportunity of doing some trainings. I'm supposed to do four trainings a year with our city council, as well as um, our managers and directors that work within this. And then also thinking through modules of how we're going to continually contra train employees as it pertains to DEI. And then develops, conducts, and evaluates. Probably like the first couple months of my job, I don't know how many surveys that I went through and I looked through. There was a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> I have not made this many presentations in my entire life, but I've done it. <laughs> so that's something I also get to do is just looking at the research and the data that's been put out there and um, just anything that's really focused on my body of work, really speaking to that language, um, that data, and then kind of synthesizing it and articulating it out so that everybody's understanding what's going on there and then people can make decisions based on those things that are being said and done. So in terms of what I've been working on, like I mentioned earlier, the strategic plan is a huge part of that. Um, we're getting ready to actually finalize that. One of the things that we just recently did, um, we did an equity scrub. So we had every department in the city submit um, to our consultants all the body of work, all the initiatives that they plan on doing in their department for the next like 10 years. Um, it was a lot of them. And then what we ended up doing myself and folks who sit on that strategic plan team is that we went through them and airmarked any of them that we felt would be using um, the city's equity toolkit or its community engagement framework model. And the hope behind that is that if we're, by airmarking those, um, we would now train and equip managers, um, anybody that's overseeing any sort of programs, things of that nature to know how to utilize those toolkits so they can make sure that all the work they're doing is more equitable. And so that's been kind of a huge lift. Myself and my colleague Marcus have kind of taken on. Um, once those are earmarked, once that strategic plan is finalized, how do we make sure that people start using those toolkits and feel equipped to use them as well too? Um, many departments have already started utilizing them, but not everybody's aware of them. And specifically for those two, two toolkits, they were created like right when COVID kind of the pandemic, I guess, erupted. 
And so it, those are materials that not everybody's fully aware of. And so wanting to get that out and allow people to understand how to utilize those better. Um, Lunch and Learns is something that I started doing three months ago. And the idea was just to have a once a month gathering for an hour during lunchtime where folks can come from all departments and we host them in different departments each across the city each month and just have conversations about topics that are DEI related. Um, thus far, we've done one on um, that focused on words that are racist that we say commonly that we shouldn't be using. Um, we talked about, uh, looked at like ADA accessibility and terminology and that that we often use that also has um, discriminatory connotations. Um, we've done a bunch of other ones. I can't remember all of them at the top of my head. I know Mary, you've been to a few of them as well too. But the hope is just like, you can't solve the world's problems in an hour, but here's an opportunity. It's kind of almost like if you go to a conference and you pick a topic and you're coming in and you're learning about it, the hope is that people can come and maybe take away some key pointers that they can use in their day-to-day -day lives, whether that's personally or professionally. And it was kind of cool. The one that we did with languages, hearing people come and say, like, somebody said that word in the meeting the next day. And I was like, do you know that's racist? <laughs> um, and being like, I just had no idea. And that was really helpful. Um, and then in ter terms of internal committees, I'm on a ton of committees. I'm Simone. I'm on a ton of committees. Um, <laughs> and so a lot of my job, too, is like folks bringing me into the work and the projects they're doing um, to just offer my knowledge and my expertise or just to be a voice there that can interject and um, based on my knowledge. And one of the things that I personally had to create and oversee is our Equity Leadership Council. And so that's a group of about 32 individuals um, with representative, representatives across each department in the city that meet once a month. And pretty much their responsibility is to kind of be, I guess, another layer of eyes and inspiration as well as like task force that tackles some of the issues as they relate to DEI um, across the city of Hillsborough. And so that might be something as simply as like either they're getting more ongoing training and they're learning and they're feeling more equipped in this subject area or it might be like, we're trying to make a decision about something or we need to build out something and we want to get their knowledge and their thoughts and opinions on it before we roll it out. Um, so really a great, another layer of strategic planning and strategic thinking um, when we talk about this work that um, I've been hired to do and the city is committed to doing as, in terms of racial equity. I send out quarterly DEI newsletters. I've sent out one so far and hoping to send those out four times a year. One of the things I noticed right away when I came onto the city is that there's a lot of folks doing really great work, but a lot of people don't know about it. And I think part of DEI work, it's very hard. And oftentimes a lot of people are fearful of that work. Not a lot of people, but some people are very hesitant to like engage with that terminology and that work. Um, or sometimes people feel like this is really hard work. Like we don't do enough of celebrating or acknowledging, acknowledging where we been and where we're going and where we've come from. And so this newsletter is really meant to kind of capture all of that. Like, what have we been working on? What's going on internally that folks don't know about? What are some resources that are easily accessible that folks may not be aware of? Kind of creating a space where you can get really quick information for any folks that might be interested or wanting to learn more. What are trainings happening locally as well as statewide or nationwide that people can be a part of? And so I really just wanted like one avenue of folks to really connect with the work if they so chose to um, here at the city. And then along with that, what I hope to do in the long run is actually create a portal on our intranet um, that houses materials, resources, trainings, anything like that that's related to this body of work where folks can go on there and download it or look at it if they need to. Um, other things that I do is training development and I've been working on, um, like I said earlier, the equity toolkit and community engagement framework training has really been the focus of my work a lot these days, um, really trying to get that out. But then also a big part of my role that I haven't had a ton of time to think about, but I'm really going to try to do that in the new year is how do we continually develop employees here at the city in these respective areas? Like, what does that look like? Um, obviously, when you're talking about a massive, you know, entity that has folks that are part time and full time and folks working different hours or different job functions that require them to be here all times of the day. Um, what does that look like to train and equip everybody? And I'm still trying to figure that out. So if you have any ideas, I'm all ears for those as well, too. 
Um, and then lastly, like there is some policy writing involved, uh, mostly internal type stuff. So like right now I'm working on a limited English proficiency policy, as well as like a language access guide, uh, really trying to make sure that people have the resources and the knowledge to know like what we are required to do. Um, and also like answer the question of like, how do we do it? Uh, and so working on those type of things, that's really new for me and a new body of work that I'm also becoming accustomed to. But um, what I love about working here is that I feel like it's as long as, although we've been around for a very, very long time, there's just so much room for development and growth. And I think that's the beauty of the work is that oftentimes you come into spaces and you're trying to fix things that are already in place, but it's such a wonderful thing to come into a space and you're kind of part of the building process. I always tell people, I'm like, the city of Hillsboro is like Sims. If anybody remembers what Sims is. <laughs> and I'm like, it's like one of those things where like, they're still building it. So you could be like, I don't think that should go there. I think it, it should actually go here. And this is why. And so like, that's actually really exciting too. And what's excites me about the work is that I'm getting to be part of some of the beginning conversations of things getting developed. And we actually have an opportunity to create what we want, as opposed to trying to fix all the things that have been done and maybe have been done to prevent things that my body of work is created to do from actually happening or occurring, if that makes sense. So things that people can come to me for. Um, trainings and mediation. Um, if departments or councils or commissions or whatever are, have topics or themes that they're wanting to be trained on, I'm available to do that. Um, if folks have issues that as re that relate to my body of work and maybe they're just wanting like insight or help how to navigate that, I'm here for that as well too. Um, if folks are use, looking to utilize the toolkits or any other materials and resources that um, my area of work has provided or provides, I'm happy and willing to help, you know, train and discuss those and equip people to utilize those. If you need diversity, equity, inclusion advice, or if you have questions, I'm always available to those as well too. And then just thought partnership as well. Um, like I said, I sit on a lot of committees. Um, I'm sure at some point I'm gonna have to start being like, no, but I'm not there yet. <laughs> but the idea behind that too is like a lot of people, I know a lot of departments are doing strategic planning or doing strategic thinking or thinking kind of bigger picture or even short term and things of that nature. So if you have things that you're thinking about or you're wanting to do and you're not sure how to incorporate my body of work or the body of work that, you know, racial equity, what the city is committed to, um, feel free to reach out to me as well and let me know about that too. Um, here's a quote by Dr. Martin Luther King. And it says, it should now be apparent that sincerity and conscientiousness in themselves are not enough. History has proven that these noble virtues may degenerate into tragic vices. Nothing in all the world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. And the reason why I picked that quote, and this is also again from that book I mentioned, is just that I don't know, it's interesting doing this body of work in 2023, um, a day and age where social media is just readily accessible. And the last several years, folks, like you, if you, even if you wanted to hide from this area of work, like you couldn't, it was everywhere in your face. And so I just love this quote because it's a great reminder too that, you know, I think we're at a place in time where like we have to, whether we agree with the work or not, we have to be willing to acknowledge that like it's there like these topics have been, they're on the surface, they're not underground. And so we can't just ignore them. We have to be conscientious of like, how are we going to address this? How are we going to move more forward and recognize like there's virtue in that and there's beauty that can come from that as well too. So any questions for me with all that? I know I only have 30 minutes, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, does anyone have questions? Uh, the the question I have, we're going forward at, at the board, we're going to have a new director. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a, a new issue for us. But also we were looking at some things previously, um, some policies and, and, and asked to use the, 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 tool, the, the toolkit, the, the uh, toolkit. I will rather admit I didn't fully know how to use it. So is that something that we would come to you? Would, would, would we come to, or would we go through our, our new director and kind of come in at the, the pathway? 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The okay. latter of the this idea. is that we can work with the uh, with Tammy when she comes on board right. to talk about how do we support the board in advancing equity through policy making and supporting our city council since city council ultimately adopts them. Right. Like how do we make sure that this that this is flowing through from top to bottom and bottom to top? Yeah. And yeah, and and I know that I would, because I'm old. Um, uh, so I, there are many things that you don't, as you mentioned before, many things you just you grew up knowing. And I grew up in a different part of the country than the Pacific Northwest, very different part of the country. And um, so that you just, it, it's something you just grew up with and don't realize what you're doing in inadvertent. Yeah. So I appreciate that that we're working hard on this. I appreciate your work. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, then la lastly, um, we are, we want to honor your time, but we do want to let you know that at seven o'clock, we're going to go downstairs and have some food and party. So <laughs> you're, welcome, <laughs> you're welcome to join us and uh, uh, if you so wish, but uh, I Really, personally appreciate your time and what you you brought forward, and, and the board I'm sure really appreciates um, what you brought to us tonight. And we hope I I know we can use it. Yes, of course. I'm here to support any way I can. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is, there, is there a way for us to sign up for the newsletters oh. as they come out? Great question. Yes, I, I was going to say, I don't know, is that a, something that's only it, given out to employees or it, is that something? It goes through to employees, but we may be able to have Tammy forward it to you okay. or maybe Emily. Okay. There. <laughs> and we may be able to have Emily forward it to the board. So okay. I think at least for a while, it would be yeah. interesting yeah. Yeah. for us to, to read. Or include yeah. it in the packet. Yeah. 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 Yes. Four no, no secrets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, Eunice? <laughs> yeah. 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 I also have a, the next Lunch and Learn will be held here in January as well. So oh, those happen. In the library? Yes. Awesome. Yeah. So those happen. I don't think those are open to you. Board and commission. Then never mind. <laughs> we, we, we come with a different set of yeah operational things. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that we <laughs> no not to put a Debbie the Debbie Downer on that. No, but I, um we are Amber and I and another group are working at looking at other ways to involve boards and commissions and to create connection across boards and commissions. So oh, excellent. and up, like how to evolve the DEI training and some other things. So. That'll be coming in the future. Thanks. So one of the things I, I attended your training down at the city council. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things I really appreciated was in your presentation, you said, don't be afraid to get it wrong. And um, also when I spoke with you afterwards that, you know, there is this tension between because as a library we're open to everybody yeah and all marginalized groups don't have the same needs or requirements. And so we're always trying to do this where we're hitting a balance that we can have everybody in the space yeah. as comfortably as they can be and so i really appreciated that yeah you know, yeah be comfortable sure. with the tension and i think that's the thing is like i think people think that you arrive at some point at a place of like oh i'm gonna feel at some point i'm gonna get it right and i'm gonna feel comfortable and i'm like mm, as long as you're dealing with people who have completely different thoughts opinions background the easiest pathway is just learning how to be uncomfortable and learning how to live in that space all the time honestly and so yeah Thank you. I'm super excited that you're yeah. in the city and doing this work. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to grab the thing. Oh, the little thank you for your time. Yeah, of course. Thank you thank for coming. You. Thank you. See you later. <laughs> Bye. 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 Okay, the next thing on our agenda is um, we need to have the election of our library board chair and vice chair for next year those offices will take um, come into being in january for the january meeting unless i can hand it off as soon as we get done here <laughs> <laughs> so um anyway i so the floor is open for nominations for um 
do I need to do these separately or we just nominate them all? So I'm opening the, the floor to nominations for a board chair and vice chair. I'd like to make a motion to nominate Linda Milker as board chair and Dorian Russell as vice chair. Do I have any other nominations? Okay, then we're going to vote. Do all of them? Yes. Yeah, okay. Armstrong, second. Okay. And we second the nomination, then we are going to vote. All those in favor of having Dorian Russell, uh, excuse me, Linda Mochler as chair and Dorian Russell as vice chair for next year for our library board, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? <laughs> all right. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. We have a new board chair and, and vice chair. All right. Yeah. So now we can move on to the policy work. Um, the has a lot of good work done on it. And um, I'll turn it over to Karen. Thank you. Well, I am incredibly excited <laughs> to bring you the final draft of the library rules for use policy and the patron progressive discipline rubric, which will be used in conjunction with the policy. Um, so it has been many months of work on this, and I just want to thank all of you for all of your input, the team here who has worked so hard on it, the employees who have given their feedback on it, um, ask me members who have also been involved in it. Um, it has been it has been a labor of love, I would say, and I think we're in a really, really good place with this policy now. Um, and we're all excited to be able to put this uh, forward after you recommend it to council and then Council approves it. Uh, the plan is to have you recommend it tonight. If you choose to do so, then it will go to city council at one of the January meetings when we can get it on the agenda. And then we'll be able to put it into effect immediately after that. And we have lots of training uh, planned for once we roll it out to our staff. So uh, it did go through final legal review you will see that we did make a few very minor language changes, and that was mostly to make sure that the language aligned completely with the municipal code so that it would be as clear as it could possibly be when we are addressing patrons who may be needing our help in being successful in the library that day. So, are there any questions? Any comments before I call for a vote? I had one. <clears throat> when I was looking at the consequences and the things that you can do, I'm trying to find on the rubric. Side. On the rubric, yeah. So are we recommending the rubric too, or is that something that's down in the is that in just an internal? Yeah, an internal. No. Okay. No, the rubric is it's, the rubric has to go with it. It has to go with. Oh, okay. But that has also been reviewed by legal. Yeah. Well, I, I thought what I saw in here, and perhaps I'm wrong because I can't find the, I can't find it right now. And for some reason, I didn't highlight it. Uh, is that in a number of cases, it just said um, that there would be a that they the staff could put in a one week exclusion, and then it went right to the ninety day exclusion. Is that it? I didn't see any any mention of the months. What am I looking for here? Yeah, for the consequences. Yeah. yeah. So we can ask for an exclusion up to 90 days. So we could say to a responding officer, we would like a 30 day exclusion. Uh, oh, so you have to have, I thought that in the policy, it said the staff, see the fourth incident, the staff asked to leave for one week and then the fifth mm -hmm. incident. So, Mm. Is it going to jumps up to a 90 days, but does the staff have the option of also saying we need you to leave for two weeks? Isn't that not what it said in the policy? I don't believe we said two mm -hmm. weeks. I believe we said five days, one month. Okay. So one month. <clears throat> so just to make it 
so that you're not automatically going from one week mm -hmm. to 90 days. If you, if we could somehow just put in the one month option within the rubric as well, so that staff. We could say exclusion of up to 90 days will be requested. Where am I? What page it would be, um, it's page one of the page one progressive under tier one consequences. Page probably the same as Oh, sorry, ones. that's 27 of the packet. It's probably, probably all three tiers. You yeah. would change to up to that's 90 plus. Right. Yeah, because <laughs> otherwise it implies that it'll always be 90. The way I well, except it. for tier three, which is an automatic 90 days. Right. Fair enough. So one and two. Just so that staff knows they have the option. Of, I, I mean, I do think that, that part line. of, because this was reviewed by staff okay. as well. So this went through several iterations before okay. we got here. I think there was also a desire to be able to have some, like by time, like they, the, there is that flexibility, but there also is when people read this, we want them to know that there's a consequence. By time, by time staff is getting to a point that they're even asking you to leave for the day, there's a lot that's been happening. Sure. Right? Yep. And by time you're leaving for a week, it's it's pretty it's pretty darn already. serious. And so if if we're if they're asking you to leave for more than a week, like we need it needs to be then you do happen. want them to go really right do. from a week all the way to the 90 days and not mess around with the one month. I, I think, think I think so. I yeah. Just, yeah, I think that was the like, intent from staff okay. is that they they didn't want to have this kind of constant back and forth because it really Makes does sense. take something pretty egregious by time. Yeah. Oh, sure. There. Yeah. Sure. Okay. And honestly, we don't make the determination on the exclusion. That is up to HPD when they respond. So we can request an exclusion and they are the ones that actually say, OK, I'm excluding this person for 30 days or for 90 days. It's that way all the time on yeah. all the exclusions. Yeah. Okay. They'll ask us what we want. And uh -huh. we always, you know, are very upfront about what we would like to see. But sometimes they decide because they know a con, you know, they know yeah. the situation or. And it can be a appeal. So, I mean, you want to have something that's concrete enough and defensible enough that when, if they were to go before the court, that they can say like a 90 day doesn't seem reasonable to a judge. So they have a much better sense, PD does, of what's going to be acceptable and what will what will be upheld. Okay. 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 So the request will be for 90 days, but then HPD will use their discretion to say, ah, it'll be 35 days or whatever they yeah. uh, feel is important. And it, okay. it does say up to 90 days on page 24. In the um, policy. Yeah. Yes. So I mean we have we have that leeway yes right available to yeah, us. Yeah, I was just trying to mm -hmm. to make the two because on page 23 as well it says um if the person returns and the behavior continues, library staff may exclude the person for periods of time including one week or one month. That's why I was confused about whether that would require Hillsborough Police Department. So I thought that yeah. the one week or the one month was prior to the police coming. We can we don't issue the exclusion. We request the exclusion. even for one week or one month. Okay. Okay. I was just yeah. And then the next one says a 90-day exclusion or issued by the Hillsborough Police Department. But to be clear, all of them require the Hillsborough Police Department. Yes. One week, one month doesn't matter. Yes. Okay. Any further comments or questions? Thank you. Then I'd like to entertain a motion to uh, that we approve this policy to be forwarded to the city council. Are you making a motion? Are you I, I'm, I'm requesting a motion. A motion. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion <laughs> to put forward the um, rules for use policy and uh, attached appendix appendices to Hillsborough City Council. And I second the motion. Uh, you can't second, second the motion. <laughs> I was going to try not shirk my duties. Okay. <laughs> Somebody else needs to second it. Armstrong second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Then the motion passes. Take it to the council. Right? Yay. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Woo. Now let's talk about fonts. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're putting this on your accomplishments of 2023 <laughs> self-assessment. <laughs> okay, so now we have some advocacy reports. We do. Well, we have one. The foundation has a report, I believe. 
Uh, they do. Uh, let me scroll back. Um, uh, it would be extra funny if I pointed out that it wasn't like <laughs> uh, the found uh, just a quick recap of the foundation's year of 2023. Uh, we welcomed uh, three new board members. Uh, so the, our board is growing and we do have some feelers out for uh, some more additions. Uh, we had our first author speaker event since pre-COVID with Nicholas Kristoff coming out and speaking as a, as a fundraiser that went rather well. We've lined up our next speaker event for uh, early this next year, Joe Sacco, who is a cartoonist that does graphic novels. Uh, he'll be coming out and speaking in, in February. Uh, we, uh, what was that? March. March, thank you, Mary. Uh, <laughs> Uh, too many dates in my head. Uh, we had a a free to attend astral projections event next door in the uh, in the big room for uh, which was uh, what type of millimeter film? Sixteen mil. Eight. Eight mil. Eight. Yeah, oh. yeah. Eight millimeter film uh, and had shared some cartoon. It was well attended with at least uh, I guess anywhere seventy to eighty people attending. Uh, we uh, authorized two thousand dollars for uh, to help the library expand its Ukrainian collection in response to public comments given Thank earlier you. this year, uh, and uh, we sponsored a um, story walk. That's what they're called, yes. uh, and uh, uh, the, um, the the things tiny branches. Tiny branches. That's what they're called. Uh, and uh, we hit our first goal for generous words of uh, and completed that campaign. I tell you the number, but I can't remember what it was. Uh, so it was some sort of ten of thousands of dollars. Yes. It was either ten or twenty. I I can't tell you right now. Um, so we hit that, and we were we're looking at starting a new goal uh, to continue to pro provide. Uh, to our mid, well, work towards our mission statement, which is our mission is to develop, administer, and allocate private funds to provide the extra margin of excellence for the city's library system. Uh, and it's on a personal note, it has been a pleasure to be the liaison. And I look forward to another year of hanging out with y'all and uh, supporting this wonderful library system. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I think there was the friends uh, thing included in the packet. Is there anything more? I don't have any other information. Uh, Barbara's going to be here for our party. So. Yeah, we didn't get an up update in from yeah. 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 So, uh, and it, it just happened to me. Of course, it's probably out of, out of order. But um, at one time, we had an Ukrainian, the, the Ukrainian collection thing on on an agenda, and we were going to get updated on that. But I it, I don't see it here, and I'm not asking for it now. Is but our yeah. So beginning in January, we're going to have a Ukrainian story time. Oh, so yeah. that's that's on top of the collection, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's coming, and that's going to be um, facilitated by community member. Oh, okay. so yeah. So that came about. Okay. And and then we also. Piece from um, Elizabeth Oh, that was about the books being added. Though. The books being the added. The collection. Yeah, so thank you. you. Yeah, and and uh, I read through all of that, and then of course, did I read that or did I? Know that? <laughs> I know about that. Um, so I apologize. That's anyway. Um, are there any other things that we need to? I wanted to ask Simone if uh, anything can be shared about who our new board member is going to be. No. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, because the while the mayor has made his selection, that he has not yet recommended the appointment okay. to so council we, for council. We team. haven't narrowed it come down completely yet. Yeah. Well, he has narrowed. He has narrowed it, narrowed it down, but it has, still has to go for council. Okay. So, um, it will happen at the first council meeting, and oh, uh, which is going to be. be I haven't even second. notified that individual yet that they should be at the council meeting. Mm -hmm. For 
the approval. So we're, yeah. <laughs> you guys are always so far ahead of me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, I've, no, I've notified the two individuals who are at the top, but okay. did not get it. And I literally have not quite sent the email before, but I'll send it before I go on vacation. Okay to that person. Uh -huh. I'm really wanting to say out loud who I'm, it is. I know I'm, I I'm trying to read your mind right now. <laughs> I can exactly. feel like I, if, I just look harder, if I just look a little harder past your eyes. What's that, what's I that can, meeting? I can, that, so. I can see what it does. So so I can see what it does. January 2nd. January 2nd. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So wow. Yeah. They, they'll, they'll know so they can We're attend like, our first full, uh, board meeting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Spring. Full board nice. member, we'll, we'll, they'll be a full they are hitting the ground running yeah. yes so we'll be getting all of their tammy will come on and she'll be we'll be orienting them together I, so, <laughs> hey, so january board meeting everybody come you're going to miss a lot <laughs> 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 right. yes. yes um any other things that we need to i can tell you that the mayor is moving forward with your reappointment recommendation that I can say out loud. <laughs> so we heard you were okay with it. So excellent, excellent. I'm glad I don't have to show up on January second and uh, make a ruckus. <laughs> I mean, you can always show up and make a ruckus. Uh, I did want to, for going back to my uh, my report, I forgot to mention that the foundation also bought books for Band Books Week mm -hmm. uh, oh, nice. to, to help distribute. We're very proud to uh, yeah. participate in that. So a couple of things for me personally, I, I just turned in the copy that I borrowed of paying the land. So if anybody wants to put it on hold and, and get it out, it's a little bit for it to get back in. Um, but yeah, I was able to put it on hold, pick it up, and now I've turned it back in. Um, and secondly, um, all of this that we've been, um, we've been talking about with the policy that we just approved and everything, I'm going to bring up a movie that I think is a good thing for you to, to watch at some time. It's called The Public, and you guys have probably oh, yeah. seen it. Um, it's, uh, it's a movie by uh, Mia Estevez, and um, Alec Baldwin's in it. Uh, it is not available on Canopy. I checked before I came, <laughs> but it is available for rent. I think it's four bucks. YouTube, Amazon Prime, um, Apple TV uh, available. So if you have, if, if you're looking for a movie to watch and you want to spring for the four bucks, I highly recommend it. Um, it's um, lots of library love, and, um, and and it opened my eyes a lot about the, the role of public libraries, and it's, and it's a it's an entertaining, very well done, um, and. Um, so tell me, let me know if you if you watch it because um, I'd be interested in knowing your some of your personalities, how you respond to that. Anyway, there's uh, oh, one sorry. downstairs at Fun I was going to say, I'm sure. Exactly. Our, and one at Shoot Park yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I, yeah, we were like. <laughs> I, I, would, I would highly recommend it. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, any other things we'd like to do and we're easily on time. Do I have a motion to there adjourn? A couple, there, there are a couple of exciting volunteer opportunities still, still oh, coming up. Yeah. I, I personally recommend the Cocoa Bar at Chief <laughs> Park for those oh, who in such activities. <laughs> yes. It can be fun and Thank exciting. you. That's going to be, it's going to be great. Thank you. They do that on Christmas Eve and, and they use so much stuff on here. Yeah. It's, it's only a small uh, time frame. It's only from 11 until 2. Um, if you're available to help out at Shoe Park, that's wonderful. If you're available to come out here, it's going to be a little bit busier because we're having some seniors come in. Ooh, okay. some live, um, live singers come in. Live, a, a choir. Do you need extra singers to just come in and just start? <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you the library. And say if you don't, if you aren't aren't able to access the volunteer sign up thing, let Marcia know, Mark Kale, because we can get signed up. Okay, anything else? All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn, Deb. Do I have a second? And second. second. Oh. <laughs> and no second. 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 This meeting is adjourned. Great. All right. That's that's 2023. Yes. <laughs>